Hi guys, so I would like to do a quick Gauss's Law problem and kind of simplify things as much as possible. So um, the problem that we're going to do, we're looking at a uniformly charged sphere. So we have a uh, volume charge density and we're trying to find E everywhere. So what that means for E everywhere, we're going to find the electric field um, as a function of R anywhere inside of the, the charged sphere from zero to B. And then we're going to find the electric field outside. So we're looking at this blue sphere here. Um, so we're looking at uh, finding the electric field as a function of R from 0 to B and then finding the electric fields um, for any radius larger than B also as a function of R. Um, e field here and the E field here. Okay, so to do that we're going to use Gauss's law. So Gauss's law, we have the integral of E dot ds, okay, is going to equal our Q enclosed over E naught. So when we're looking at the this inside part here from zero to B, the charge enclosed is gonna be less than the total charge because the total charge is when our radius is at B, right? That's the full charged volume. When it's less than B, we're taking a smaller chunk. Um, so when we're looking at it inside, we have to be aware that we're looking at a smaller chunk of enclosed charge, okay? So that's what we're gonna do first. We're gonna do this. We're gonna call it region one, and then we're gonna call this region two. For a sphere, we know that we have uh, an E field in the R hat direction. If it's uniform, it's uh, just coming straight out, you know, all the way around at a right angle. So coming straight out. So we know that. Uh, and then DS. And then we're going to have Q enclosed over E naught. So this DS is always our Gaussian surface. So it is the surface area of the, like, the circle inside that we draw to try to measure. So we're, we're going to do just for the sake of simplicity. So say we, we solve for our surface, and then it's gonna to equal to Q enclosed, right, over E naught, okay? So now we wanna solve for the E field, right? And we're gonna do Q enclosed over surface, right, times E naught, okay? So what is the last thing that we need to find? Well, we need to find our Q enclosed, right? So if Q enclosed, uh, and in this case, we have a uh, volume charge density, right? Because we have a sphere and the sphere is a volume. So the volume charge density means that we're going to integrate the volume charge density over the volume. Okay. And that's going to turn into, uh, and then it's going to be multiplied by the volume. And I wrote the volume uh, in red here because the radius for this volume is gonna be the same, right? Because we're enclosing a smaller chunk of charge. So the radius for the volume of charge that we're enclosing for the sphere is gonna be the same. So these are just the shortcuts that you can take if you have a sphere for a Gauss's Law problem. Okay, so we have ER is equal to, okay. So, um, all right, now what we're gonna do, uh, we know the volume for a sphere. So volume is equal to four, uh, four thirds pi r cubed and the surface area is equal to four pi r squared. Okay, and when we do this, we always have to ask ourselves, so the S is the Gaussian surface, right? What's the radius of the Gaussian surface? Um, it's just that um, internal radius that we're gonna draw, okay? Uh, is the radius for the surface, the Gaussian surface, equal to the radius of the volume? Hmm, okay, so we're inside, so the answer is yes. Okay, so we can plug in both of these and we can do some canceling. So ER is equal to uh, PV, and also I'll put the right P naught in at the end. So PV times uh, 4 thirds pi R cubed divided by 4 pi R squared times E naught. Okay, so then our E field as a function of R, PV times squared, so we'll have an R on top. Okay. So that is our function there. And our last thing, we said PV is equal to P naught, so I'll plug that in, three E naught. Okay, so this is our function inside of the sphere. So this is our E field, so we found it using Gauss's law inside of the sphere. So this is the E field for any radius from zero to B. So that means that we could plug in any radius in between zero to B into this function and it would spit out the correct electric field. Okay, so now let's find the electric field um, outside, so for any radius larger than B, okay? So let's do that math quick here. Uh, so we are looking for, so B is our radius and we're looking for R larger than B. So we're gonna use the same approach here, okay? 
So I'm actually just going to go ahead and copy all of this. Okay. And then we're going to ask ourselves some questions. Okay. So what we did before, just to reiterate, so on the left, we have the Gaussian surface. So we solve, we need to pay attention to the radius of our Gaussian surface when we have a sphere. Um, and then we're dividing by our Gaussian surface. And then we have our Q enclosed. And in this case, this is going to be different, right? So what's our Q enclosed when we're outside of the sphere? Well, okay, let's look at that. So what is our Q enclosed? Our Q enclosed, uh, well, we're going to enclose the entire sphere, right? Because for any radius larger than B, if we're drawing a Gaussian surface, the total charge inside of that surface is going to be B. This radius might get bigger and bigger, so that just means that we're finding the E field further and further away. The reason why we can use Gauss for this is that any point on the sphere, right, where we plug in a radius, the E field here is going to be equal to the E field here, equal here, equal here, because it's uniform all the way around. That's why we can use Gauss and draw this circle and just kind of find it at any point on the circle based on the radius, okay? So total charge enclosed is going to be radius of B. Okay, so when we integrate, uh, so we have a volume, right? Uh, and then we kind of do the same thing here. So we plug in our Q enclosed, right, that we find here. We plug it in on top. Okay, and in this case, our volume, it's going to be uh, different. So we have 4B cubed, right? Because that's our total in charge, like total enclosed volume of charge. So that's the charge enclosed, Q enclosed, charge enclosed. Okay, now we're going to solve for our surface. So 4 pi uh, R squared and let's plug everything in to our equation over here so we, we have two different radiuses and that should be correct so equals um so i'm going to sub out the p v for p naught p naught and then we have four thirds pi b cubed over four pi r squared okay and just doing some simplica simplification here we're going to end up with okay so we're going to note that B is a constant, right? It's not going to change at all in this function. So um, when the fields, as it gets bigger and bigger, so as R gets bigger and bigger and bigger, so P naught uh, times 1 over R squared. So as this gets bigger and bigger, so R will go to infinity. And as it goes to infinity, the field is just going to kind of behave like the function 1 over R squared. Okay. So let's think about what that means for graphing it. Okay, let's go ahead and graph our E field functions here. So this is gonna be R, so our, our, and this is gonna be our E field, okay? So we have, we're gonna graph this point here where our R is equal to B, okay? Um, and we are going to plug in, uh, okay, so here we're gonna plug in B, right, to our E field. We're gonna plug in R equals B, to figure out what this point would be. So we're basically just gonna draw one point on the graph, so where this radius is equal to B. So we're gonna plug it into the E field equation up here. So, so this is the outer E fields, okay? And then times one over R squared, and then we're gonna plug in R equals B, and then we're gonna end up with P naught, and that's the point that we're gonna graph here. So we're gonna have P naught B over three E naught, and that's the magnitude of our field up there. Okay, so we plugged it into our outer, but notice uh, if you also use the inner, just because, um, so our inner field right here, if we plug in B for our inner fields inside of the sphere, uh, we're gonna end up with P naught B over three E naught. And the reason why they're both equal is because if we look we're graphing up to B here and then larger than B. So at the at the point where they meet, uh, where we're plugging in B, it should give us the same value. Notice the, the thing changing in this equation here, right? If we pull out, uh, so for our inner equation, right? If we have P naught over three, um, oops, I keep writing my threes backwards, I apologize. Three E naught R, uh, this is a constant. Okay, and r is our function, so it's linearly increasing by this number, right? This is our slope. It's, it's basically like, you know, like 3x or whatever. This is the number, and this is the slope. 
So if we think about the way we draw that, we have a straight line just going up there, okay? So it doesn't totally matter, just draw, you wanna just draw where your max E field is and then it's linear up to here. And then, uh, as I said before, notice how this equation, so this part is a constant and this is behaving like one over R squared. That means that it's falling off quadratically. So one over R squared. Okay, and that's our graph, okay? That's our graph right there. Um, if you look in the book, uh, there is an example problem. Uh, it's called example three, six, and it's on page 89. Uh, it's almost identical, except they give you a negative P naught in the beginning equal to your PV. And so the way that they graph their function, it's just upside down. So it, it looks uh, something like this, basically. So that's the only difference. Okay, so hopefully this helped clarify some things. Um, notice that for this, you can use, you can uh, use these uh, surface area and volume functions. Uh, so you can use these guys just for a, um, for a general sphere, for uh, the integral of ds and dv and you can skip plugging in those bounds when you just have a sphere, okay? So hopefully that can save you some time and maybe simplify some things when you're doing work like this on an exam. Just pay attention to uh, what radius you're looking at. So on the left side of the equation, that's always the Gaussian radius. If you're drawing something smaller than the radius of your circle, uh, make sure you keep that in mind. And then the charge enclosed will also have that radius, right? If you're drawing something smaller than the total charge, then if you're drawing something larger than the total charge to find your E fields, um, the, the charge enclosed will have a radius that's gonna be smaller than the Gaussian radius for us.